So if you want to make something like this and you want to spend 8 hours and 12 minutes to make it, then you're in for a treat. Please enjoy this visual feast and if you are interested, please go to my channel to see the full course. I'll see you there. You're still there? Well then, welcome aboard to the ultimate tailless approach to cloth sewing in Blender. I know, right? This is gonna be a very long course, but there's a catch to it. You see, I recorded this opening after I finished uh, recording the entire course and that's why I know how much time we're gonna spend. Though 8 hours and 12 minutes is a long time. But the thing is, because I recorded the, the course in live demonstration manner, I showed you every single thing. I mean, you will actually see me do the entire thing from scratch to this finished scene. So it goes without saying that most things we're gonna do here are repetitive. If you're a complete beginner, it's a bliss to watch these repetitive things because, uh, you know, there's a comfort or at least insurance in knowing that I'm not gonna skip things out in a live demonstration. And though it's repetitive, you can always go back and forth and the information that you need is still there. And if you're not a complete beginner, if you already figure out the things we're doing, so you can always skip ahead to the next time stamp. If this is the case, I'm sure that you're gonna slash the time you'll spend by half. Or better yet, I just figured this thing out when I edited the videos that setting the playback speed to two times faster is actually a fun way to speed things up without the fear that you might miss something, which is the case if you're skipping ahead. This way too, you'll be slashing the time by half. So yeah, to help a little with its gigantic duration, I'm gonna be cutting this course into five parts. The first one is the introduction. Uh, the second, measurements and measuring. The third, drafting and cutting. The fourth, assembly and styling. And finally, the fifth, finishing and shading. This is the introduction. And though we're gonna talk about the what's and the how's in the subsequent parts, but in here, we're gonna talk a little bit about the why. The first why is why I made this course. Well, first because I got positive reviews when I posted this uh, back then. And second, because cloud simulation is an out of touch and out of context topic for many, many people. And that's the first why. And the second why is, why is that the case? If you Google cloth simulation in Blender, most people will show you the settings and whatnot, and probably they will show you how to make like a towel, a cape, or some other flat surface and cloth based uh, products. 
only a very few people really do make actual piece of clothing using cloth simulation. But even so, they always seem rather incomplete and they lack any sort of structural measures that anyone who wishes to make a cloth simulation can agree on and follow. Most of them rely on their personal intuition, the thing that is very difficult to follow by those who watch it. It's an odd thing because almost any other thing in Blender has already had established fundamentals. Modeling, sculpting, animation, node-based added shading or shading in general, but that's not the case with cloth simulation. And it's not like cloth simulation is a brand new thing either. So I imagine there's a fundamental difference between cloth simulation and any other field in Blender. If I am too bad for it, that fundamental difference lies in the approach we use to make things in Blender. You see, Blender and other 3D applications for that matter have this fake it till you make it kind of approach when it comes to objects creation. We don't really have to make it real. We just have to make it look visually real. If we are to make a coffee machine in Blender, we don't have to make the actual tinkering machine inside. We don't even have to understand how it works. We just have to make the visible parts of the coffee machine look real. So when we make anything in Blender, what we need to do is to get a reference image and then build a 3D model that closely resembles that reference image. We don't have to think about why it's built or constructed the way it is or how it works or probably how its functionality affects its form. However, in our physical world, these things that we don't necessarily have to care in 3D world are the things that actually matter the most. Like how to build the machines inside the coffee machine so that they can, they can make, make coffee. Or what is the optimal capacity of the water tank or the coffee filter dimension? Those questions are important for coffee machine manufacturers. There's an actual principle of design in our physical world. Function over form. Meaning that a form of anything will be built around its functionality. That's a huge difference because in, in Blender, for most of the time, we skip that function part and straight to the form part. And you may be thinking, well, that's the point of Blender, isn't it? Blender is not an engineering 3D application like AutoCAD. And yes, that's actually what makes Blender Great. We don't have to limit or cap our ability to create things in Blender by our lack of understanding and knowledge about how those things work in real life. In Blender, we've got no limit but our own imaginations. We are not bound by some physical constraints that naturally bind our physical world. So, yeah, for most cases, this fake it till you make it approach works perfectly well. 
However, in Blender, there are a few things that need to be built using physics properties. And that's where we got our problem. For this one rare occasion, Blender overlaps with our physical world because physics properties in Blender are built using the same physical laws that govern our physical world. That's why when we try to make an object with physics properties in it, like a piece of clothing using a cloth simulation in Blender, we are clueless because we don't know how to make like shirts in real life either. So if you want to do that successfully in Blender, you practically have to think like you actually make that piece of clothing in real world. In one sense, we have to be a make-believe tailor. It's difficult, I know, because we're gonna spend 8 hours and 12 minutes to do so, but if you think it's worth the time, I can say that by the time you finish watching this course, though you won't be an actual tailor, but I believe you'll be a digital tailor. So if that sounds interesting for you, in the subsequent parts, we're gonna talk in abundance about the what and the hows of making a piece of clothing using cloth simulation in Blender. So yeah, I'll see you there.